Greetings, Heartland. Last time I got to speak with you all, uh, we talked about a psalm, Psalm 90, and I enjoyed doing that psalm so much with you guys together that I thought we'd try another psalm today. And uh, a psalm that's been on my mind quite a bit lately is Psalm 23. And we'll just start by reading the psalm uh, all the way through for Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is one of the shorter poems in the Psalms. It's only six short verses, but it's so rich and layered. Uh, let's look at verse one together. The Lord is my shepherd. This is one of the uh, most personal, intimate pictures of our relationship to God in the Psalms. I belong to God. He has taken me under his care. The author of this poem, David, he uses a metaphor, which is sheep herding, that he was deeply knowledgeable about. David himself was a shepherd as a young man, caring for his father's sheep. What does this metaphor of shepherds and sheep, what does it teach us about God? What does it teach us about ourselves and our relationship to God? At first glance, it seems like a fairly unflattering metaphor to use for us, that is to compare us to sheep. Uh, sheep have many characteristics. Most of them have to do with being vulnerable or not very smart. Sheep have very little in the way of natural defenses. They have no teeth, no claws. They're sort of an argument against Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. Sheep wake up in the morning and they seem to huddle up together and say to themselves, uh, which, which one of us is going to die today and what creative new way are we going to think up to do it? A sheep's eyesight is very poor. If that wasn't enough, they seem to have a really hard time sensing in which direction sound is coming from. Sheep are uh, there's no really very nice way of putting this. They're actually pretty stupid. Uh, incredibly stupid at times. Uh, I have driven out into the pasture in my truck and the, the lead you would start walking around my truck and all the other sheep would start following it. And I really think they would just keep on going round and round and round the truck for hours and hours if I didn't get in the truck and try to drive off. Uh, just this week, I watched a three-week-old lamb uh, repeatedly hurl itself at a, a woven wire fence. It had gotten stuck on the opposite side of the fence from its mother, and I opened a gate about three feet away from this lamb, and it continued to just throw itself headfirst into this gate rather than go through the opening, which it apparently couldn't see about three feet away. So. Uh, this leads me to another defining characteristic of sheep, which is they do nearly everything in a flock in mass. If they panic and go off a cliff, they're all going to go off together. And sheep do a lot of panicking, uh, probably because they're so defenseless, but they frighten very easily. And when one of them spooks, they all spook together. So you might be asking, is there anything at all positive in this comparison between us human beings and sheep. 
There is. Uh, the shepherd clearly loves the sheep in this psalm. He feels real warmth and affection toward them because they are so dependent on him and he must give them so much individual care and attention. They really do become endearing to him. There's more good news to this metaphor that compares us to sheep. Jesus calls himself the Lamb of God. The old phrase, God our Father and Christ our brother. Jesus, the Lamb of God, has identified himself with us. He took on our human condition. Uh, <laughs> Got a little helper here. He took on our human condition. He suffered and was tempted in all ways like we are. Um, he identifies himself with us. There's more good news to this metaphor comparing us as humans to sheep. Jesus calls himself the Lamb of God. God our Father, Christ our brother. Christ identified himself. He, he entered into our sufferings. He became one of us. He was led like an innocent lamb to the slaughter. He identifies himself with us. Let's start with verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I belong to him. He loves and cares for me. Verse 1 closes, I shall not want. This doesn't mean that I get everything I wish for or that no challenging circumstances ever befall me. In this world, you will have trouble, Jesus promised his followers. But really and truly, I will lack nothing that I ultimately need for my soul. Verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Sheep won't lie down unless they feel completely safe and contented and cared for. Otherwise, they just keep moving around on their feet. He leads me beside quiet waters, beside still waters. In Palestine, where David and others herded sheep, uh, the climate was semi-arid. And shepherds constantly had to be on the, on the search for good, clean water supplies for their, for their sheep. Sheep who don't get good, clean sources of drinking water will drink water from any old dirty pool or ditch. Uh, we humans, too, are prone to leave the, the pure, satisfying water of life, Jesus himself, and to uh, wander off and try to drink from other sources that that don't satisfy and that leave us ill. The verse says, He restores my soul. Uh, he nourishes us at the deepest possible level. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, the next verse says. Sheep are, are creatures of habit. Uh, they quickly veer off the path and, and leave ruts in the pasture and, and uh, but they're, they're also prone to straying off. God, our shepherd, leads us back onto the good path. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. In this verse, verse 4, David switches uh, his use uh, to the second person pronoun. In other words, he refers to God as you in a more a personal, intimate way, starting in this verse. There's a, a theologian named Philip Keller who grew up uh, his whole boyhood on a sheep farm, and he wrote a commentary on Psalm 23 that's really insightful. He maintains that Psalm 23 actually follows the, um, the, the season of the sheep herding year from spring, summer, fall, and winter, he says that in, in this verse, um, we have come into the summer season 
uh, of the sheep herder's life. When the sheep herder takes his sheep up into the high country, into the mountain pastures for their summer grazing. Uh, when I was a, a young boy, my parents were school teachers and so they had the summers off and uh, they, my dad was the uh, assistant director at a wilderness camp in the mountains of Montana, about 50 miles north of Yellowstone. And so we'd go up there in May. And uh, at that point in time, there were still sheep herders working in Montana and they would drive their, their flocks of a couple thousand sheep up the road past our camp. The camp was, uh, I, I believe it was 18 miles of dirt road from the nearest telephone. And so it was really out in the wilderness. But I remember as a boy just being struck by the, the sight of these sheep herders taking these huge flocks um, up the valley, up to the high, uh, high grazing ranges. Uh, David, as a young man, when, when he was still uh, working for his father herding sheep and the prophet Samuel sent for him, uh, David was not on the home ranch, so to speak. It says that he was up in the high hills tending to his father's flock. So in all likelihood, this would have been in midsummer. Uh, these high mountain pastures, uh, they were also the place where, where David encountered the worst predators and the most predators, the lions and the bears that he had to fend off from his flock. In order to get to the high mountain country, the shepherds, they had to lead their flocks, uh, just like in Montana, they had to lead them up the river valleys, these very narrow mountain valleys. Um, and uh, the early summer trek was the, was the time when the flock was especially vulnerable on these treks. High cliffs might uh, rise up on either side of the valley. Uh, so to move up through these valleys was to move through the shadow of death. But David says that he does not fear. And why not? Uh, because God is with him. Uh, the route to the most beautiful and wild country leads up through dark valleys. It passes through the very shadow of death. But even if we must pass through death itself, and, and ultimately, sooner or later, we all will pass through death, God, if we follow him, God will lead us uh, through that valley of the shadow of death into new life, life on a higher plane. Your, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, the next verse says. The shepherd's two main tools of his trade were his rod and his staff. The rod was basically a long, sharpened club. It was a defensive weapon used for fighting off predators. Young boys who were training to be shepherds, they would, they would practice their skill of throwing these rods and they'd become quite adept in their aim. And uh, they, would, they would be able to strike a predator who was threatening their flock at quite a distance or they might send the rod whizzing past the nose of one of their sheep that was straying off of the path of where it was supposed to be. Uh, the staff, uh, this verse mentions the rod and the staff. The staff is what we think of as the shepherd's crook. It's the long pole with the, with the candy cane shape at the end of it. With the staff, a shepherd could extend his reach to catch a baby lamb, uh, if the lamb had strayed out from where it was supposed to be or the lamb fell over the edge of the cliff and was uh, trapped down below, he could, he could take the crook of that uh, staff and hook it around, reach down low and hook up between the, behind the, the, the lamb's uh, head and neck and pull it back up to safety. Um, God is a shepherd who is um, entirely skilled and utterly competent at caring for us, his sheep. Uh, the next verse says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, Keller again says that the, the word picture of the four seasons of the shepherd's life, that, that metaphor continues here. The rich table land at the higher elevations 
uh, to which the shepherd leads his, his sheep in the summer. That high country has grass that's rich and sweet. But it's also the place up in the high country where the predators are, are the thickest and most, most threatening. Um, the sheep might graze quietly in the pasture, um, ignorant of the predators that are lurking in the trees just beyond the edge of their pasture. The shepherd, on the, on the other hand, is not ignorant of those predators. He's, he's constant, constantly at watch for them, constantly vigilant. Uh, and uh, if, if those sheep stay on the path where he wants them to be, uh, they, will be they will be safe from those predators because they'll be in his presence. The next verse says, You anoint my head with oil. Keller argues that this, uh, this verse, this word picture, actually refers also to the summer season, the high late summer season in the sheep's year, um, especially the late summer when flies and parasites and the biting gnats, uh, biting insects, plague the sheep and really drive them crazy. Um, I had always assumed in, in reading Psalm 23 that um, David, toward the end of this psalm, sort of wanders away from the sheep herding metaphors. But Keller says that actually, no, the anointing of the head with oil was, was a practice that the shepherds used. They had a, a homemade concoction that they made from olive oil and from some form of turpentine. And they would pour this over the sheep's head to protect them from the biting flies and insects that, that drove them so crazy. Uh, verse 5 says, My cup overflows. Fall, now we're now into the, the, the season of the, uh, of the sheep's life in the fall. It's the most pleasant and abundant time for the sheep. Uh, the the cool, cool season fall grasses are now growing and the early frosts have killed off the biting insects and taken the edge off the summer heat. And it really is the season that finds the sheep fattest and most contented. The cup of contentment spills over for them. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, verse 6 says. Sheep with a, uh, with a good shepherd under intelligent, skilled, and, and loving leadership. Uh, is, this is what we have a picture of here. David is boasting of God, his God, who cares for him so well and so competently. Now remember, David went through many actually painful and difficult events in his life. So he, he spent a number of years in exile on the run from his own home. Nevertheless, he, he knew that God would lead him, God would be with him. So what he's speaking about here is not the absence of trouble or difficulty, but the unbroken mercy and loving kindness of his God. The, the end of the last verse says, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is now, uh, we've arrived at the end of the sheep's year. Uh, the shepherd has led his flock uh, back down from the high country, uh, back down to the home place uh, where you have the familiar sheep hold and, and corrals and barns. Uh, at the end of our days, we will be his people. Uh, he will be our God. Since we're closing with this metaphor uh, for the end of life, I want to add in here one of my favorite poems that has to do with sheep. Uh, this is by the British poet named Philip Larkin. Larkin actually had a, a painful and, and sort of tortured relationship to faith, but he wrote this one really lovely poem about, I think, uh, the, the life that we lead. It's sort of a poem about uh, the time in which we live now, which is difficult, versus eternity. Um, it's about the relationship between the difficulties of this life and the, and the promise and the hope of the life to come. He compares the trouble of this life to lambs that are born in January and February, just sort of in the teeth of winter and the bitter cold, and they have no idea of the of the, the beautiful spring that is about to come in just a couple of short months. This poem is called First Sight by Philip Larkin. Lambs that learn to walk in snow, 
when their bleating clouds the air, meet a vast unwelcome, know nothing but a sunless glare. Newly stumbling to and fro, all they find outside the fold is a wretched width of cold. As they wait beside the yew, her fleeces wetly caked, there lies hidden round them, waiting too, earth's immeasurable surprise. They could not grasp it if they knew what so soon will wake and grow, utterly unlike the snow. Ezekiel 34 is a beautiful chapter from the Old Testament, really a tragic chapter at the same time. The entire chapter is a metaphor of comparing Israel to a flock of sheep, a flock that has been abandoned by its leaders, by its shepherds. It's been mistreated, led astray, even devoured by its own shepherds. Jesus, in the New Testament, in John chapter 10, answers Ezekiel 34 with another nearly full chapter that uses a, a shepherding metaphor. Jesus says that where our earthly leaders fail, he will not. John chapter 10 verses 7 through 15 says this, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He who is a hired hand is not the shepherd who does not own the sheep, who sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep close by reading Psalm 23 from beginning to end one more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> These guys are about, uh, oh, seven or eight days old and their uh, their mother died about 24 hours after they were born so they are bottle raised and uh and extremely friendly so if you want to come out and uh see them we have about 20 acres to wander around in uh it's very easily to very easy to social distance from everybody and i think these guys are pretty healthy so give us a call and you're welcome to come out and hang out with them maybe even get to feed them a bottle or two so good to see you heartland have a good rest of your week.